if I have a force acting on a vehicle, then, according to Newton's second law, because that vehicle isn't changing mass, a constant force acting on it will produce an acceleration. And if I have an acceleration, that means I've got a change in velocity. And since momentum is equal to mass times velocity, that means I've got a change in momentum. So exerting a force on an object, as we saw before, will change its momentum. And if I drew a force time graph for what's happening with this car, for example, I've got a constant force acting on it until that force stops acting on it and drops down to zero. Now the area underneath this graph is giving us force times time. But we know that that is the same as the impulse, which is the same as the change in momentum. So the area under a force time graph gives us the impulse or the change in momentum of that object. If we look at a video of an impact, you can see that the club's going to come in, hit the ball, it'll maintain contact with the ball for a fraction of a second, or a time frame t, and then the ball will rebound off of it. All the while the ball is in contact with the club, it's being deformed, there's a force acting on it. And we can see as the club comes in, Now if we were to draw some axes of force against time, as the club comes in to the ball and just makes contact, the force goes from zero, will increase, have a maximum force while it's making contact, and then as the ball springs away, it will start to drop. Where once again the area underneath will give us the change in momentum. And in this case, since the ball was initially stationary, that'll give us the final momentum of the ball as well. So a quick example. Club hits stationary ball, and you get the following force time graph. What is the change in momentum of the ball, and what would its final velocity be? Well, first of all, we need to work out what the area underneath the graph is. Now I've got... One, two, three, four, five full. That makes six. That makes about seven. That one there makes about eight. And that one there just over. So we'll estimate it about nine underneath. So nine blocks with each block being. 50 by 1 millisecond. So that means that one block is equal to a force of 5 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. Nine lots of that. gives me my change in momentum of 0.45 newton seconds. So that's my change in momentum. Now it wants to know the final velocity. Well, I know that that 0.45 is equal to mv. I know that my mass is 50 grams, which is 0.05 kilograms. So 0.45 divided by 0.05 will give me my final velocity, which is 9 metres per second. Now, things are a little bit different when you get a rebound rather than something colliding with another object. Here the basketball is falling down and it changes its direction as it rebounds. If we look at our before and after here, before, heading towards this wall here, this ball has got a velocity v, so therefore its momentum is going to be mv. Once it's rebounded, it's moving in the opposite direction, so it has velocity of minus v, and assuming that no energy has been lost, 
we can say that its momentum is equal to minus mv. That means that my change in momentum for a rebound is minus mv minus the initial, which was mv, which is equal to minus 2 mv. So the force that that ball experiences as it bounces off the wall is going to be equal to 2 mv divided by the time over which you get that change in momentum. And this is always the case for rebounds. The magnitude of the direction of the change of its momentum is 2 mv. And this is what the force time graph looks like for a rebound. This first half here is as it hits. So that part there basically represents mv because it will slow down to zero as it bounces off, the force decreases, this is as it heads away, and the momentum here is also, in terms of magnitude at least, mv. So the area underneath the graph here is giving us the change in momentum or two times its initial momentum. So here's a quick example, a force time graph for a rebounding 420 gram ball. The question wants us to find out what its initial velocity was. Well, first thing we need to do is find out what the area underneath this graph is. And we could count squares, or we could just say, well, if we draw this rectangle here, the area underneath is going to be half the area of that rectangle, which is a half times 150 times 0.5 seconds. So the area underneath there is 37.5 kilogram meters per second. And that's our change in momentum. Now, because we know that this is a rebound, we know that the change in momentum is equal to 2 times the initial momentum, or 2 times mass times initial velocity. So that means that initial velocity, sorry, initial momentum, would be a half times the change in momentum. So its initial momentum was 18.75 kilogram meters per second, and since momentum P or MV. If I want to get the V, I just divide the momentum by the mass, which in this case here was 0 0.42, because it's 420 grams. Substitute my momentum in from there, and that gives me a velocity of 44.6 meters per second.